Good evening. Welcome home to Most Precious Blood Catholic Church. Before our celebration begins, please take a moment to silence your cell phones. Thank you. Father Josh Swallows will be presiding over our celebration this evening. In order to seat as many as we can with proper spacing, please fill all seating starting in the front of the space. Communion lines will be in the center aisle only. If you are seated in an outside section, please follow your row all the way to the center. Please also consider how you wish to remove your mask before communion reception. We recommend that once you are the next person in line to receive, remove or shift your mask at that time. This will help you to focus on receiving the Eucharist in a reverent and timely manner. Please take a moment of silence and prayer. Now please stand and join in our gathering song. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good evening, everyone. Happy first Sunday of Lent. It's good to be here with you all this evening. Just want to welcome everyone. Special welcome if you're here visiting us for the first time. If you're here from another faith background, we're so happy to have you here with us. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observances of Holy Lent that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ 
and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, See, I am now establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that was with you, all the birds and the various tame and wild animals that were with you and came out of the ark. I will establish my covenant with you that never again shall all bodily creatures be destroyed by the waters of a flood. There shall not be another flood to devastate the earth. God added, this is the sign that I'm giving for all ages to come of the covenant between me and you and every living creature with you. I set my bow in the clouds to serve as a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow appears in the clouds, I will recall the covenant I have made between me and you and all living beings so that the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all mortal beings. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, Christ suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. In it, he also went to preach to the spirits in prison who had once been disobedient while God patiently waited in the days of Noah 
during the building of the ark in which a few persons, eight in all, were saved through water. This prefigured baptism, which saves you now. It is not the removal of dirt from the body, but an appeal to God for a clear conscience. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers subject to him. The word of the Lord. on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Praise and honor, praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus. The Lord be with you. With A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Spirit drove Jesus out into the desert, and he remained in the desert for 40 days, tempted by Satan. He was among wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The Gospel of the Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to give all of you what I desire to give you today. Um, I'm not really a preacher in that sense, I'm more of a teacher. I wish I had the gift to give talks like certain preachers I know. Like, for those of you who've ever heard Brother Adam give a talk, I, I love listening to him because if he gives a talk, it's like, it's like a pep rally. Um, I love Lent. I love Lent. And so, like, the word that I hope you end up coming out with today is let's go. So it's a beautiful season because this, this is a season where... I feel most alive. It's about conversion, metanoia, God doing new things, new life, new graces, graces that it's a season of grace, things that we didn't know were possible in our hearts, God making possible, giving us victory in new ways, getting us closer to sanctity. Lord, we are led by the Spirit into the desert. Claim us. Help us to drive Satan from our lives, to destroy our selfishness, and live in true freedom. Life with you. I uh, lots of thoughts this week. It's a beautiful week of prayer with the Lord. Uh, one of the first things that kind of made me start thinking about this this season and what it's all about. I was actually I was having a conversation with our director of faith formation and family life, Fran. And she was reminding me of this reflection that she gave for Advent. And it was on uh, this play that was called Waiting for Godot. I actually, um, I went and uh, looked up the play and 
act one of this play. It's got these couple guys, and um, they're waiting for Godot. Neither one of them know who Godot is. They don't know when he's coming, but like they're waiting for them, and you never really find out why. And in the first act of the play, there's, uh, you know, there's a couple other characters that come along, and different things are happening, but the whole time, these two guys, regardless of all the chaos that happens around them, they're waiting for Godot. And then in act two of the play, um, the guys are still there. This time they're older. Um, one of them has gone, uh, one went mute, I think, and one, the other one went blind. And um, they're still waiting for Godot. Um, very little dialogue. They're just waiting. And this play is kind of this critique of uh, kind of the pointlessness of just sitting and waiting, the, mean, the meaninglessness of life. Um, they even asked the guy who originally made it, like, uh, at, on the 50th year anniversary of this play, like, like our, it's 50 year anniversary, are you going to tell us who G Godot is? And he said, how should I know? Right? <laughs> this whole time they're waiting for Godot. And, um, you know, Fran used it in her Advent reflection to say, we can't just be, we can't just be, it can't be meaningless waiting. So Advent is this season of, like, waiting with hope. And she was talking about how we can't be like waiting for COVID to end for the rest of our lives, right? We have to start living. And that was the spirit, like we have to stop waiting. Well, Lent is a different thing. So when she was retelling me this story, all of a sudden got, I started getting excited. I was like, I get it now. Like, we're going to go find Godot. That's what Lent is about. It turns from the passive to the active. We're going to go find it what Lent is. Lent is, uh, we go into the desert. We go into the desert to battle Satan, to battle evil, to battle our selfishness. We're going to strip all this stuff out of our lives, remove anything that gets in the way, and we're going to hear God's voice. We know that it's there, and there's all this clutter, and we're going to strip it away, and we're going to trust that if we go through that battle, that God is going to be faithful and he's going to fill us with new graces, new possibilities. It's interesting that like this, this idea of Lent, um, when you go out and battle Satan, you know, we normally pray for uh, the Lord to lead us from temptations. We don't want to be tempted. Uh, but Lent, in a very real way, we're called to face them. In our, in our gospel today, this is right after the baptism of Jesus. It's interesting to think about the position that our gospel is. It's right after his baptism. And it's here, it says, the Spirit drove Jesus out into the desert. And he remained in the desert for 40 days, tempted by Satan. Like, why would the Spirit lead him out there to do that? And I've thought about this a lot in my life. It's almost as if, like, confronting all of this is just a pivotal part of the journey. It's a pivotal part of what it means to be human, and it's a pivotal part to get, like, to those graces that, are that we first received at baptism for them to really come to fulfillment in our lives. Israelites, freed from slavery. Now what must they confront? Before you get to the promised land, part of this process is you will walk through a desert for 40 years. It's going to be hardships you're going to have to endure. But this, this is the process. The garden, creation, paradise, talking snake. Why was there a talking snake in the garden? It's almost like enduring this is part of what it means to be human. And um, helping us choose more fully. We're called to choose more fully. And so Lent is, is with God, all with God, all with His grace. We're going to go seek sanctity, holiness, 
uh, Patty, this woman who I'm really good friends with. She's the receptionist at Annunciation in Altamont. Uh, hung out with her a lot when I was there. Uh, she called me up a couple mornings ago, and she, she said, looking forward to the sand and barren wasteland to scrub away my badness. She's all excited about entering into Lent. Scrub away my badness. What Lent is not. That's what Lent is. What Lent is not um, enduring suffering, simply waiting, life being hard. Uh, that's not the desert of Lent. I was reflecting on this this week, and I think a lot. My staff was, was was saying some of this this week. I've said this so many times, you know, throughout this, you know, this past year. Like, how many times have we said like? Oh man, I can't, I can't do any penance. I've been in the, like, you're calling me to the desert? I've been in the desert for a whole year. I've been through so much suffering, you know? I've been in the desert. No more desert. But that's, this is a distinction. This is an important distinction I want us to consider tonight. Have we been in the desert? In the desert in the sense of what we're talking about when we talk about Lent. Have we been in the desert where we've gone out to this place of purification and we're seeking new grace and we're seeking conversion? Or have we been in Egypt? A place that still has a lot of suffering. And have we been trying to just like console ourselves? Through distraction, through, you know internet, whatever, binge watching, whatever thing, have we, have, have we been in Egypt and we've been just trying, that's what the Israelites were doing. You know, they were just trying to uh, get by. That's not the desert of Lent. Um, as the Israelites stand on this precipice getting ready to be led out into the desert, when Thomas, uh, when Thomas Merton was thinking about that, he was contemplating it, and he said, you know, the Israelites, that's what they were doing. They were comforting themselves. But there was a process that they had to go through. He said they needed to be educated in freedom. They did not know how to, how to live free. They didn't know how to live in that grace that God was trying to give them. And the educate, the word, the Latin root of that is educere, and it means, like, to lead out the exodus, to lead out. Um, we're called to go to battle with the Lord this season. And make no mistake, it is a battle. Uh, sometimes we can get frustrated when we get really charged up and we go out there and all of a sudden there's like an onslaught and there's pushback. That's part of it. There's temptations after baptism, and we have the tools to conquer them. We have the tools of our baptism. We have the tools of confirmation, and in this season in particular, our weapons are prayer, fasting, almsgiving. Why do we have to go through this, Lord? Why is it so hard? And uh, the church fathers actually spoke on that. They spoke many things about why do we have to undergo, undergo temptation? So here's five reasons why we got to do this, what God's doing here. One, so we can learn by experience that with God, we are indeed stronger than the tempter. God can teach us that this season. Two, to prevent us from becoming conceited over having God's gifts. To bring us to humility, keep us humble, keep us calling out to the Lord. Three, that the devil may receive proof that we have completely renounced him. As we stand firm in the truth, more and more firmly, evil one will flee. Four, that, this, that by the struggle we may become even stronger. Five, that we may realize how precious is the grace of have received. Learn to appreciate that constant presence and power that God has in our lives. Learn how to live in freedom. 
Some of you, any of you there? You want to raise a hand if you were there at the 8 o'clock mass on Ash Wednesday? Anybody? Uh, the, 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 seven? Was it? No. <laughs> Father Glenn. My brother was on fire that night. I, I knew Father Glenn loved the Holy Spirit. I didn't realize how much he loved the cross. He loves Lent. He loves the cross. And uh, he came home, and he was so excited. And I, that's the spirit. He came home, and he's like, oh. I was like, what got into you, man? He goes, oh, brother. I was just, I was just imagining the prophet Joel. Rend your hearts, not your garments. Rend your hearts. And he was so excited. That's, that's the spirit we need today. All right. My prayer. Lord, we are led by the spirit into the desert. Claim us. Help us to drive Satan from our lives. To destroy our selfishness. And live in freedom. Life with you. I invite all of you to pray your version of that prayer. What do you want to ask the Lord today? Father Josh, these catechumens who we now present are beginning their final period of preparation and purification leading to their initiation. They have found strength in God's grace and support in our community's prayers and example. Now they ask that they be recognized for the progress they have made in their spiritual formation and that they receive the assurance of our blessings and prayers as they go forward to the rite of election celebrated tomorrow with Bishop Newman at the Basilica of the National Shrine, Mary, Queen of the Universe. Those who are to be sent to the celebration of election in Christ, please state present when your name is called. Sandro Hernandez. Jacob Baez. Matthew Baez. Sponsors, please move into the aisle with your catechumens for the signing of the Book of the Elect. My dear friends, these catechumens who have been preparing for the sacraments of initiation hope that they will be found ready to participate in the rite of election and be chosen in Christ for the Easter sacraments. It is the responsibility of this community to inquire about their readiness before they are presented to, the bishop and presented to Bishop Noonan. Therefore, I now ask the sponsors of these catechumens to offer their testimony. Sponsors, have these catechumens taken their formation in the gospel and in the Catholic way of life seriously? Have they given evidence of their conversion by the example of their lives? Do you judge them to be ready to be presented to Bishop Noonan for the right of election? My dear catechumens, this community gladly recommends you to the bishop, who in the name of Christ will call you to the Easter sacraments. May God bring to completion the good work he has begun in you, and now invite you to come forward and offer your names for enrollment by signing the book of the elect.
Catechumens, please turn and face the crucifix. Mother community, please stand. My dear brothers and sisters, we look forward to celebrating at Easter the life-giving mysteries of our Lord's suffering, death, and resurrection. As we journey together to the Easter sacraments, these catechumens will look to us for an example of Christian renewal. Let us pray to the Lord for them and for ourselves that we may be renewed by one another's efforts and together come to share the joys of Easter. For these catechumens, that they may be freed from selfishness and learn to put others first, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear. For their sponsors and godparents, that they may be living examples of the gospel, we pray to the Lord. For their catechists, that they may always convey to them the beauty of God's word. We pray to the Lord. For these catechumens, that they may share with others the joy they have found in their friendship with Jesus. We pray to the Lord. For all who are gathered here today, may they seek a deeper conversion during this Lenten season by experiencing the Lenten, dis the Lenten disciplines of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. We pray to the Lord. For all who have died, that they may rest in peace in the kingdom of heaven, especially Jorge Santos Bush, we pray to the Lord. Our Mass is being offered for the people of the parish. We pray to the Lord. Now we pray for our own private intentions, which we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Father of love and power, it is your will to establish everything in Christ and to draw, draw us into his all-embracing love. Guide these catechumens in the days and weeks ahead. Strengthen them, strengthen them in their vocation. Build them into the kingdom of your Son and seal them with the spirit of your promise. We ask this through Christ our Lord. I now invite the catechists for these catechumens to come forward for a dismissal. My dear friends, this community now sends you forth to reflect more deeply upon the word of God, which you have shared with us today. Be assured of our loving support and prayers for you. We look forward to the day when you will share fully in the Lord's table. Now let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. You may be seated.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, by abstaining 40 long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance. And by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and giving you thanks he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, 
Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
to your house because of your great love. I can worship in your holy temple because of my reverence for you, Lord. Listen, O oh Lord, to my prayer. Hear my cry for help. Glory to the Father. to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Listen.
One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Let us pray. Renew now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened. We pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth, through Christ our Lord. Please be seated for some announcements. I want to thank you for all the families who've already made their gift to Our Catholic Appeal last weekend. We're off to a good start. You can find all the details in our bulletin this weekend. Our goal is to have every family within our parish support God's work through the diocese and its essential ministries. So not everyone can make the same size gift, but everyone can make the same size sacrifice. So if you haven't already taken an OCA envelope from the Narthex um, or um, please take one, or you can safely donate online. Thank you so much for sharing God's blessings. Uh, this is your last chance to register for our Lenten study, Jesus, the Way, the Truth, and the Life. Groups are available in person or online, so visit our bulletin or our website for more information on that. Uh, if you haven't already, please pick up your Lent and Easter schedule from the baskets in the narthex as you exit Mass today. Um, we're still missing many baby bottles. Each bottle costs a dollar. So bring those bottles back. So if you've not returned it, uh, please, uh, full or empty, return them to the parish office as soon as possible. Thank you. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May bountiful blessing, O Lord, we pray, come down upon your people, that hope may grow in tribulation, virtue be strengthened in temptation, and eternal redemption be assured. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Saint Michael the Archangel.